All right, let us say hello to TJ Dillashaw, one half of the co-main event of UFC 280 going down this Saturday in Abu Dhabi. He will challenge Aljamain Sterling for the UFC Bantamweight title in hopes of becoming a three-time world champ. Very interesting matchup for sure. TJ, thank you for doing this so close to the fight. How are you? How's Abu Dhabi? Oh, uh, man, Abu Dhabi's good. What? Like uh, eight, eight or nine days already now? It's been... Uh quite pleasant uh such a great place um very clean and everyone's so nice out here it's it's been it's been amazing it's been good to get acclimated to the time and the weather as well are you acclimated to both at this point yeah absolutely man i mean i did a pretty good job of uh making sure that i stayed up throughout my plane flight and got tired when i got here to kind of get on as fast as possible but no matter what your 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 rhythm of your body just kind of wants to do the opposite you know so truth be told, I was approached to do this interview to talk about the fight, obviously, but also about the importance of online privacy, which is something that you take very, very seriously because you have dealt with issues personally in this regard. And I was told that you've had to deal with, you know, some unsolicited phone calls from fans and packages being sent to your home, which obviously as a family man, as you are, that has to be very concerning. And so I wanted to ask, is that accurate? When did this happen? And, and how did you get involved in doing all this research and, and being sort of a pro proponent for protecting yourself online? Yeah, um, that is very all very true. Um, and yeah, definitely concerning, right? But it's all been, for the most part, um, nothing like bad, right? There wasn't like bad phone calls or bad package, nothing like that. But it just still kind of gets your mind spinning that that's a possibility that my number's still out there and that it could be reached by any and, and bought by anybody or that my address was able to be searched. And I don't know, I just feel like that's real sketchy, especially when it comes to the security of your family. Um, and then it goes on and I learned so much with teaming up with delete me, delete me is a company that I really researched and started working with and um, a company that has helped me become more knowledgeable in this space as well too, of what is actually possible with data brokers and advertising and selling your information. And, um, and not only just people that are in the public eye, not just like celebrities or athletes and things like that, but every single person that gets these spam calls, the reason why you're getting them is because of these data brokers that are selling your information. Right. And then the more people know about you, the more your uh, financial security is at risk, just everything. But, you know, unfortunately, I, I'm not a big fan of it, but unfortunately, in today's age, everything is online. You know, I mean, with social media and, uh, you know, just the way we live our, live our lives now is everything's online. I, I think I saw a post on maybe it was Instagram and you were talking about this and you said that you did like a base, ba ba pretty much a basic search of you and, and things that, and you found like thousands, like not just like dozens, you found thousands of things that were sort of on the dark web about you. Is that true? Like, was that crazy to, to see that much stuff about you that, that, that it was that easy to find? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the most common search thing on the internet is actually you know, a person, right? No one's saying like me or whoever, but just people in general. Um, and actually there's over 2000, uh, um, Personal inf two two thousand personal information about myself taken off the web by delete me through like seventy seven different sites, you know, and data brokers and things like that. So yeah, it's astronomical the amount of information that's out there on everyone. I mean, obviously, I live in the public. I live on more than the average person, but still, I mean, just you know, get on the computer and just search someone you know, and you'd be surprised at how much you can find out just by searching their name. What's the craziest thing you've learned since you've started diving into this a little bit more? I think it's the data brokers, man. And just like, uh, you know, when you go on a website on your phone and these um, websites get you to try to opt out or to agree to the cookies, right? Agreeing to like cookies for the website because otherwise their website won't work to the fullest ability, whatever it may be. By you clicking, like you agree, you're like giving away all your information to them, right? Like you're like letting them know like – there's a lot more than you ever knew. So, I mean, I now know I need to dismiss all of those, right? It's not going to make any difference. And just the amount of data brokers that are out there that it's a multi, multi-billion dollar industry just selling your data, selling your information. And knowing, I mean, I don't really care about them knowing what I do and what I'm interested in, but just uh, the fact that I'm able to, you know, get my phone number and things like that is just absurd. It's, an anno it's so annoying, right? Getting yeah, all those calls. How many spam calls do you get a day, you know? 
Yeah, it's, probably I, mean, two or th- I get like two or three a day, and it's so frustrating. I can only hit the block button so many times. I mean, I felt like it was uh, a lot more than that even for me, and now I don't get any of them, which is kind of nice. So what, what, what's the best advice you have for anybody watching or listening to this right now in, in that regard? I mean, if you have the time to do what Delete Me does, you can do it. It doesn't cost any money. You're in, you just have to go and ask. You have to know what websites to look at, how to find them, and then you can ask permission to have your information taken off of it. But for example, if I did all the information on me, it would take me probably about, I don't know, 20, 28 hours, working hours of me having to go through it and then having to continually do it, right? Even though you get removed, you get put back on these lists, right? So it's an ever... It's never ending game. So if you have the time to do it, go for it. But I think the, the best bet is to pay someone else to do it for you, especially when you want to spend that time with your family or for me training, right? I'm working on getting a world title back here in what, five days. So uh, I need all the time I can get and delete me. So help me doing that. Cause it, to me, it's very important for not just me and the security of my family, but also security of my businesses that I'm involved in now as well. <laughs> Definitely very important stuff, no doubt about it. Something else that is very important to you is this Saturday, Eddie Hot Arena. You will fight Aljamain Sterling for the Bantamweight title. It's a moment you have probably been waiting for for quite some time. That's probably putting it likely, lightly, but it's fight week. Your first fight with the title on the line in nearly four years. Is the fight week feeling to this point the same as it was for the Corey Sandhagen fight? Or has it been ramped up a little bit because it is for the belt one that you feel that you never really truly lost inside the octagon. Oh, it's ramped up a lot, man. I mean, not only was the Sanhagen fight a fight night fight, you know, a number one contender fight, but the fact that it was still like towards the end of COVID protocol stuff, you know, like we were staying in the UFC, like private hotel that they had in Vegas. And I fought at the apex with my fight card was actually like the first fight card that they let fans actually even go to the apex. And it was only a hundred fans. So it was very minimal in the things I had to do, which it was kind of nice to be honest. Right. But you know, this is kind of like a re opening experience. Like, Oh shit, it's been a while since I've had to do all this stuff. I forgot how like jam packed media week is. I mean, I had to talk to you Monday because the rest of the week is crazy. Like my days tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday are just, they're packed, you know, um, which is a good thing. I mean, it's showing you how many eyeballs are on this fight, how many eyeballs are on this sport, how much the sport has continued to grow. And um, that we're all the way across on the other side of the world and doing the exact same same stuff. There, And I'm sure you've heard this, but there's a good chunk of people who wanted to see Jose Aldo get this title fight over with with Aljo over you. And I think it's mostly because of the nostalgic feeling they wanted to see that they knew this is his last run. They wanted to see if he could get there one more time. The UFC obviously went with you. They gave Aldo to Marab Dewalishvili. He loses the fight and then he retires from the sport. So what do you say to those people? And how do you react to Aldo, I guess, turning the page in his book? Because I'm sure if you won the title, if you win the title on Saturday, a fight with Jose Aldo would have been something that you probably would have been interested in, not just as a fighter, but as a fan as well. 100% interested in that. I mean, I've been a giant fan of Jose Aldo for a long time, you know, him being a legend in the sport and, when I decided to even become a fighter when I graduated college was back to WC days when he was fighting Uriah Faber when I was in that camp, right? So just knowing Jose Aldo for a long time and the killer that he was, yeah, absolutely. Um, and the career he's had has been amazing, right? And I, I definitely understand him wanting to step away. I mean, it's, it's been a long road and, uh, you know, he ain't no spring chicken no more. And, uh, you know, either of myself. And, and that's why it's so uh, awesome to continue to be on top for almost a whole decade. You know what I mean? So, um yeah, I mean, the only thing I, I mean, I can't really say much to it other than just get out there and prove myself and uh, show them that I'm I'm the greatest in the weight class and that uh, I never lost it. You know that it's gonna, and they might say in new, but in my head, it's in still. I, I'm obviously your focus is on the fight and not how the fight is being viewed in the grand spectrum of it all. But from an X's and O's standpoint, on paper, this might be the most competitive fight on the card. Like from a stylistic perspective. And I'm sure you're not looking at it that way. You're looking to just truck him and win the title and, and be on your merry way, but it might be the best fight on the card on paper in terms of actual mixed martial arts competition. And the weird thing about this is this fight is flying under the radar. In my opinion, it's not getting the love that the main events getting off, which 
you know, that happens in every card, but even the Sean O'Malley, Piotr Jan fight is, seems to be getting a little bit more buzz than this one. Do you, do you feel like this one's flying under the radar? That's not getting the love and the respect, so to speak, that it probably deserves on such a big card like this. You know, I don't really pay attention too much. And maybe that's a little bit of why too, right? I'm not a guy that's going to live my life on social media. I'm not a, not a guy that's going to, to, um, comment back to things or, or get into that kind of stuff. I've never, never have been, um, maybe a little bit of detriment to, to building up some, some steam to things. But, um, also it comes down to the fact that this champion that I'm fighting is very boring. You know, he's, he's a, he's a very boring champion he, as in the fact of his fighting style. You know, I mean, he's, um, you know, I, I felt like I, I've given a, re- a reason for people to, to, to hate on me. Right. But the reason why people hate him is because he's just a douchebag and he uh, uh, is a boring fighter. You know what I mean? So maybe that's a little bit of why it's going under the radar. Um, he's never been in those drag out wars that you see Oliveira get into and become a champion and, and continue to, to prove himself for the fights that I've been in through the, through the title fights and defenses that I've been through and, and the records that I hold for the knockouts. So um, I'm looking to clean this boring champion out and uh, run, run, run a series of, of uh, amazing knockouts here in the Bantamweight division. You were there in Jacksonville when he beat Piotr Jan and got the, the judges nod. Sounds like you weren't thoroughly impressed with his performance that night or were you? I'm not, I mean, you were right there watching it. No, I was impressed. Don't get me wrong. Like when you talk about how we're like very equally like mashed up, whatever you're talking about in the fight, like I'd be an idiot not to think, I mean, look, I, I, I highly believe I'm going to run through Sterling, but I'd be an idiot not to look at his strengths and what he actually holds, you know, and he put the the fight into his game, um, that, that fight, you know, and, and impressed by him being able to do that because I really thought the, you know, Jan was going to do the exact same thing to him he did the first time. Right. Uh, but it showed some big holes in Jan's game as well, too. Um, you know, but Sterling shot 22 times. The two takedowns that he got won in that fight. You know, and, and also the fact that Jan's a slow starter and gave away round one. You know, um, he's always been slow. He's always kind of started off slow, getting your timing down before he turns up, turns on the gas. But just those two takedowns, once Sterling to fight. I can tell you this much. He's not going to be a backpack on my back. Yeah, that's something I've never really showed too much of is my jiu-jitsu because I never needed to because I've always wanted to knock someone out. But um, I'm going to have no problem uh, out grappling this guy. So, I mean, I think – and I think when you look at it on paper, people don't understand how much I actually have the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu in my back pocket. Like you said earlier, you're not online stirring the pot at all. That's that's not your style. You, you haven't done a ton of interviews, but – Aljo has been out there doing a lot of them. And he, of course, taking the the low hanging fruit in a lot of people's minds, bringing up the past. He's trying to tie it to your present. He's throwing out the accusations of cheating based on your social media photos that he's already made peace, that he's fighting a souped up version of you. That is a quote. Do you even like read or watch any of that stuff? Like, do, do you even care to respond to those claims? I figure I'm talking to you. Might as well give you the opportunity. But do, do you yeah, even I mean, see I- that stuff? Every now and then you see it, right? Um, I like I said, I don't live my life on social media, so I don't, um, you know. But you do see it, right? You get asked questions about it, um, and I think I asked a few questions about it a, a week or two ago. And to me, it's just him. He's already building up excuses. You know, he knows he's got this fight in front of him. He's got, he's got me. This guy standing across from him is going to rip his fucking head off, and he's got to create an excuse of why he's going to lose already. I don't know if you if noted again. Going back to social media, you don't see this stuff, but. It appears that over the last, as we record, 24 to 48 hours or so, you have become the baby face of this fight, TJ. I don't know if you've seen this, but Al Jermaine's on Twitter, photos with Andrew Tate. People didn't seem all that thrilled. He's defended in some ways. Some things may have been taken out of context, but it seems like you were the heel heading into this, and it seems like a lot of those people are now jumping on Team Dillashaw. Have you noticed this at all? Have you seen this? What, what's gone on in the last 24 to 48 hours? I have not. I, have, I really haven't paid attention, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh man I, it's uh it's, it's hard to like the guy man i mean he tries and i really don't think he's probably that bad of a guy i just think he's trying too hard you know what i mean and i think maybe a little bit uh insecure i mean he should be because he's fighting he's fighting me and i'm gonna fucking run through him right so he's got to be a little insecure with that and he's gonna be on top for this one fight right i mean you got the way he got the belt was pathetic right and then he defended it but that's gonna be his only only real win on top, right? So I can be understand being insecure, but is what it is, man. 
Um, I just got to uh, get out there and get the work done and, and look for that finish and continue uh, building records. You know, I want to continue to get the most finishes in this division. I got guys like Chito Vera that are uh, knocking everyone out left and right. So I got to keep it up, man. I got to get some finishes. And I got to fucking fight more often than a, a year apart, man, with these injuries. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. been, it's been tough. So what's the headline going to read on Saturday when we're writing this all up? What, what are we going to be writing about? What's what, what's the headline going to say after this fight Saturday? Uh, dominant performance, three-time champ. May, may I ask, and I don't know if you can even answer this until it actually happens. If this is how it happens on Saturday, you dominate, you become three-time champ. Bruce Buffer says, and new, even though you don't believe that it's and new, it's and still in your eyes. And Dana wraps yeah. that belt around your waist. It's been a long time, man. And I know you still maintain no one beat me for this title. I lost it because I did what I did. And I actually don't think you get enough credit for the way you've handled that situation, taking it on the chin, just coming out and just talking about it and dealing with it and and moving on. But going through that suspension, the injury in the comeback fight, beating Sanhagen, getting back almost to normalcy, getting on a pay-per-view card, getting back to a title shot and winning the title for the third time. Like, what is that all going to mean to you? Yeah, but it'll be something I'll have to answer that question because I have a lot of a lot of answers for it, but I'm gonna have to wait until uh I have that, that belt wrapped around my waist to, to let everyone in on some stuff. So you know what I mean? So there there's some there's some there's some stuff I'd left that I'll, I'll be talking about here once I have that belt around my waist. Fair enough. Now, if this goes the way you say it will, you mentioned Cheeto Vera. Do you feel like he's next in line? Because I mean, obviously Jan and O'Malley are fighting. That's a that's a very big deal. And a lot of people feel like if Sean wins, he's fighting whoever wins the fight between you and Aljo. But what do you think? Is it Cheeto, Marab, the winner of that fight? How, how do you kind of map this all out? I know you don't want to look past Saturday, but you know, a little glimpse into the future. Yeah, I man, we got a killer weight class. You know what I mean? You got you got you got Jan. I mean, Jan's a I would love that fight, right? Because he's um it looks like a killer, he likes to fight. I like his style, you know. Um, he'd be a, a great matchup for me. Um yeah, you got, you got Chito Vera, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm a friend of his. I, I really like the guy, so I want to see him succeed as much as possible. I wouldn't really want to have to fight him, but obviously if it's for the belt, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're doing something great for each other. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, Marab. I mean, Marab just beat Aldo, right? That's a big that's a big statement piece, right? So there, there's a lot of guys that will be fighting for him. They're going to have to have some sort of uh, contender fight to figure it out, I'm sure. You could be a potentially very busy man. What What do you think about the Jan O'Malley fight? Do you feel like people are sleeping on Sean here, or do you feel like people are viewing this just right? That Piotr's really good. Sean's taking a big step up, and this is going to be a learning experience for him. I mean, I'm definitely picking Jan to win the fight, but uh, yeah, I mean, O'Malley's good, man. He's got good timing, right? So his physical attributes of how long he is in the in the division. And his timing and just his creativity um, could give Jan some problems, right? Like, I'm not counting the guy out, but just from what I've seen from Jan, I, I mean, but it's only a three round fight, too, right? Exactly. Can't just like take a round, can't just take a round off and let uh, O'Malley out, out point him. But O'Malley also didn't do that against uh, Pedro Munoz, another shorter guy to stature wise and, you know, pretty flat footed as well, too. So most likely Jan's going to get out there and get it done and probably chop his legs out and just be a little aggressive and figure out his timing. Do you have a prediction in the main event? Oliveira versus Makachev? Such a such a crazy, interesting fight. I'm just going to sit back and be a fan of that one. I'm a fan <laughs> of both guys. I'm definitely going to be, be a one, you know what I mean? Good answer, my man. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I know we're five days away from the fight as we speak right now. I appreciate it very much. Don't miss it. Saturday, UFC 280. Aljamain Sterling defends against this man, TJ Dillashaw. Looking forward to it. And uh, and thank you for telling us about Delete Me and, and the important battle for online privacy. It's some pretty scary stuff, man. But, you know, it's nice to get some nuggets and, and learn a, bit, a little bit more about that. Super important stuff. Yeah. But thank you again. Unfortunately, you don't know until it's too late. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, you don't know you need to have a, a online security and privacy until it's too late and you check out your bank account and it's gone or something, you know? I mean, obviously, I'm lucky I haven't been there, but the the, the cases are endless. So um, just the same way you game plan for a fighter, prevent and have great defense is the same way I want to do for my life. So uh, delete me. You got to check them out. Use code CHAMP. Save yourself 20%. There you go. Thank you again. All the best fight weekend and all the best on Saturday. Thank you again for the time. I really appreciate it. Of course, man. You have a good night or day. Sorry. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs>